Hello and welcome. I'm excited because today we're going to be releasing four new free programs. Honestly, last year I put that one out and I thought some people would run it um, and I had no idea the extent that it of the amount of people it would reach and how many people would have great success with it. And honestly, it was it was overwhelming. And I'm so excited with how well it did that I want to I want to do more. I want to be able to put out some more information, some more free programs um, and, and really more so some different versions to really kind of help to kind of give uh, a bit more individuality because it's a template. It, this is a template. This is not meant it, uh, to be individualized to each specific person, but hopefully with these four different versions, you can find one that best suits you so you can get the best results based off of what you need specifically for your training. Unlike last year, I'm not going to do a full breakdown of me writing the program. So if you are interested in seeing me actually write the program column by column, um, cell by cell, make sure to check out last year because really there wouldn't be much difference in the sense of kind of what I'd be explaining there. But if you want to see me actually write, th go through and write the program cell by cell and really get the understanding and, and breakdown of that, make sure to check out last year's video. This is going to be more so a how to and an informational video of how to best utilize this program, how to get the most out of it um, and how to use the Excel spreadsheet. So with the four versions, basically what we have are four options based around two different variations of bench and deadlift. I did not do anything to squat because honestly, uh, I'm not a, I don't think a lot of people need to squat three days a week. So I didn't want to put out a three day squat week pro, or three day program for that or a three day squat frequency program um, because I honestly, I think most people who were running this program last year squatting twice a week saw great progress with that. It's more so the individuality of being able to do we need three times a week bench or four times a week bench, which is the difference between some of the versions, or are you conventional versus sumo deadlift, which I think does make a decent difference. So I wanted, I have a three time a week bench, conventional, three time a week bench, sumo, four time a week bench, conventional, and four time a week sumo. So all of those are going to be linked below. You can check out the one that you think best suits you. And I'll explain those a little bit further as we go along. What I will say with squat and how you could individualize this program to you is if you do struggle with competition squatting twice a week on the secondary day, as I'll explain, um, you could change that to high bar or safety bar squat. Now, the ranges that you'll see in the program will be wrong because the percentages won't line up correctly, but you can still use the RPE accordingly and do uh, SSB or high bar squat if you feel the need to individualize it more towards yourself. So without further ado, let's get into the program, show a screen recording of me going through it so we can start, start kind of detailing some of the nuances, how you can individualize it to yourself, some of the options, and then how to be able to actually use the Google Sheet with what you need to insert and input. Okay, so taking a look at everything, for the most part, I'm just gonna be using the three times a week bench and conventional deadlift as my guide here. But really, I mean, they're all fairly much the same except for some slight differences in programming. Um, so taking a look at things, one of the first thing that you need to see is the recommended training split here. It's gonna be different for every program. You're gonna see here, I have a five day split with which uh, exercises should be done where. So this, this, if you look at primary, tertiary, and secondary deadlift, that is day one. This is day two, day three, day four, and day five. Same thing goes for the three times a week in sumo deadlift, except that's a four day a week program. We have the four times bench and conventional deadlift or sumo deadlift program, and then the split for the uh, three, four times a week and conventional deadlift program. Now, can you change this? Yes, that's one of the biggest questions I get, but I have this for a reason because this is the op this is the split that I would recommend to get the optimal results. Now, the, the easy changes you can make is just moving everything back one day or moving everything forward one day, but if you switch days entirely or, or move things too far around, it is going to change the effectiveness of the program. Now, obviously that's where it's tough because I wrote these based off of a template and everyone's schedule is different, but you can kind of work it through and if there's something that works better for you, you can adjust that, but just know that this is the recommended split to get the best and most desired results. And going along with that, this is a template. This is not a one size fits all. So I get a lot of questions of, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this accessory stuff? If you feel like based off your past training, that is going to be best for you, 100% go for it. Um, you can adjust this however you see fit. It's just that I wrote this based off of writing it for the middle of the bell curve and what I think will work for the average person. If we're looking at the differences between the program, the main difference between the conventional program and the sumo deadlift program is some of the accessory work, but more so that secondary deadlift day. So on conventional deadlift, you'll see here we have cluster singles. On the sumo deadlift program, you'll see that we have higher rep work that's RPE based. That's really the only difference um, for the most part because a 
Typically, sumo deadlifters tend to respond a little bit better to higher rep work and higher volumes. With that being said, you could be the polar opposite. You could be a conventional deadlifter who responds better to the higher rep work, or you could be a sumo deadlifter who responds better to the lower rep cluster singles. So you can easily do that. If you know that based off of past information, you can do the conventional program sumo, or you can do the sumo program conventional. I would though keep the accessories uh, the same based off of which one you're doing, because like 45 degree hyper extensions and dumbbell RDLs are gonna be more specific to someone who's sumo deadlifting and needs just more hinge work, versus if you are a conventional deadlifter, doing hamstring curls is gonna be more specific because you already have a lot of uh, hinge work based on conventional deadlifting. Next up, for the accessory work, you'll see some that are more specific, such as belt squat, leg press, or hack squat. I actually have these mostly in the order that I would recommend them. I would recommend belt squat first, leg press second, hack squat third, just based off of availability, but there's multiple options there based on what you might have access to. You'll see that as well as there's also times that I put optional. So on this day two bench press, incline dumbbell bench press is optional because you know what? Some people require a little bit more accessory work, some people do not. If you feel like you can tolerate and need this additional accessory work, you can add this in. If you feel like that is adding additional fatigue that is then affecting your actual bench press, you can take that out. The same thing goes for the reverse lunges on the secondary squat day. If you feel like that is adding too much lower body fatigue, don't do it. If you feel like that is beneficial because you need added hypertrophy, go ahead and have that in. And then lastly, we have a lot of of choice, just because again, this is a template. I don't know what you have access to and I wanna make this as, as open-ended as possible for you to be able to adjust towards you. These can be anything that you would like, but a really cool thing that we did this year is I teamed up with Ben Giannis and we have a tab here with accessory movement options. So if you don't have anything else that you can think of or you want to try some new things or you want to look at kind of what Ben would recommend, we have for every single of choice, row of choice, pull down of choice, hamstring curl of choice, tricep, bicep, and side lateral, three to four options for each with videos of how to do those as well as additional notes based off of attention and kind of how to go through it. So you can click on those within the program, pull that up, and you're gonna be going to an instructional video of how to do that um, with Ben going through the intention, going through the execution and whatnot. So that's a really cool option here. I had a lot of questions last year, like, oh, what should I do for the accessory stuff? And if you, if you, if you aren't sure, go to that accessory movement option tab and be able to look through those videos, find one that you could do um, and, and be able to insert those in for your of choice. Just like last year, I have an optional peaking block. So if you are, working into a meet, there is a peaking block that schedules right into a Saturday competition. The one thing I will say, because I get this question a lot, is should I do the peaking block if I'm not doing a competition? And my recommendation is no. The fact of the matter is when you peak, you're pretty much tapering off all of your volume and you're pretty much wasting a couple weeks of productive training by tapering off to peak your strength. So if you are not competing, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend just going back into week one after that third block. But if you are peaking into a meet, that optional peaking block is a great option because it allows us to be able to kind of taper into a meet. It's structured so that we can do that. Um, and then everything works its way into meet day. Something I'll get into a little bit more detail as so the execution of the program is you're gonna see for all of the RPE based work, there is a bottom end BE and top end range. That is a guideline, that is not set in stone. If you truly feel like you can go above or below that range, you should do so. It's more so I'm trying to help to make sure that you have some guidance here, especially for people who are newer to RPE and may not be sure what they should be doing. I'm gonna explain the ranges a little bit more, but just know that they are a guideline. They are not set in stone and they're also based off of your training max. So if your training max is completely wrong, it's going to give you incorrect ranges. And the same goes for some of the percentage-based work. So you can see here on this tertiary bench day and secondary deadlift day, these are based off of the percentage off off of the actual training maxes. So if you're finding that these are way too light or way too heavy, it very well could be based off of the fact that these training maxes are incorrect. But at the same time, if you're seeing any of this percentage based work versus RPE, it's kind of meant to be lighter. It's not meant to be super difficult. It should be fairly low RPE. So you you, be, you need to be pretty confident that it's 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 the incorrect training max and it's way too easy before going adjust those because you do not want those to be too hard. And the last thing before getting into the actual program is to make your own copy. I have it listed right up here. You need to click file and then make your own copy to Google Drive. So what that looks like is you come up to file, make a copy, 
and then you will be able to copy your document into your own folder. That is how you're able to do it. I have uh, probably four to five emails a week of people asking how to use a program or how to download it, and that is the simple way to do it. Make sure to click file, make your own copy to the Google Drive. Um, obviously, if you're watching this, you probably don't need to know the link to the YouTube video, but also the YouTube video link will always be in the program if you need easy access to it. Okay, so now since we've gotten through like the most the most asked questions and kind of the, the, the things that you need to know of how to execute the program, let's go through how to what you need to insert. Um, I'm really just gonna go through a couple weeks here because once you kind of see what you need to insert, it's pretty self-explanatory from there. But looking at like week one, of this block, you have a top set of five at a five to six RPE, and it gives you a range here, 290 to 310. Based off percentages, what that means is 300 is the percentage that would equate to like a five or six RPE. Again, that's based off the training max and doesn't mean it's 100% correct, but it's a guide to give you an idea of maybe where you're gonna be. And then as you're warming up, you're gonna be able to make a better adjustment and figure out what is a five to six RPE. Let's say that is 300. What you will do is insert that in and it will then give you the rest of the work for the day. And that's how you're then going to see those value cells then calculate into actual numbers. For the next two movements on this day, they're just percentage based. So there are already programmed weights based off of what that training max is. And you're gonna see these little red red uh, boxes here that basically just notates the top set of each movement. So this, top, this set of five is the top set for competition squat, for Larson bent, competition bench press, it's actually ascending sets into a top set of 190 pounds. And then for conventional deadlift, you have a top set of five by one on cluster deadlifts and then a back off set. And to explain cluster deadlifts, if you've never done them, basically you're gonna do five singles broken up with 45 second rest in between each one. And then after you complete all five of those, then you can rest however much you want. Two, three, four, five, maybe 10 minutes because you're a power lifter. And then go on to the next set of five by one and have 45 second rest between each of those sets. Moving on to the accessory work and what it means for one set of 12 at an eight RPE, followed by two sets at eight RPE each set. So let's say you're doing belt squat. You're going to do a set of 12 around an eight RPE. What I'd recommend for all accessory work is tend to tend to, to bias towards conservative earlier in the block. Eight RPE is more of a guide versus a set standard. That could be a general range. Maybe you're biasing more towards like the lower end and like seven RPE week one. And then as you get in the later of the block, you're pushing it heavier towards like maybe nine RPE. At the same time though, most accessory movements are uh, a bit novel in the sense that maybe you haven't been doing them and you're gonna make a little bit more rapid progress. But either way, you're gonna do a set of 12 at an eight RPE. The warm up sets do not count. Um, as well as don't do ascending sets, you're gonna go straight to a set of 12. And if it's a little bit easy, that's completely fine. You know, you can jump later in the block. Whatever weight that is, let's say that's 500 pounds. You can insert that in if you'd like. You're going to continue to do that same weight for two more sets. What you're going to do though, is instead of doing 12 reps, you're gonna do as many reps as you can to an eight RPE each set. If that truly was an eight RPE on the first set, likely you're not gonna be able to do 12 reps for all three sets. Likely the next set you're gonna do like 10 or 11, and then the third set you're gonna do like nine or 10. It's gonna go down in weight as you fatigue. If you find you're doing more than 12, set, 12 reps, or you can easily get 12 every single time, top set probably was a little bit too easy, but you're gonna do the same weight for the next two sets. And rather than having a set number of reps, you're just gonna do as many reps as you can to an eight RPE each time. All right, moving into day two, we've got close grip bench press on this day. You've got ascending sets. So you've got a set of four at a five RPE and a set of four at a six RPE with ranges for both. So let's say you do 215 pounds on the first set. That's not really gonna do anything other than you're just gonna insert in the weight. And then you do 225 pounds on the second set and that will then give you what to do on the three by six um, back off work. From there, we have the optional incline dumbbell bench press, much like the belt squat. It's a set of 12 at an eight RPE, and then you're gonna with the same exact weight, then do two more sets to an eight RPE each set. Next up, we've got row of choice, picking whatever variation you want. First up, you got two sets of eight at an eight RPE each set. What that means is adjust as needed to do two sets of eight around an eight RPE. Maybe you find after the first set, you can go up a little bit and it can still be an eight RPE. Maybe you repeat the same weight. Maybe after the first set, you're like, eh, I can't do that same weight to get an eight RPE. It's gonna get really tough. I don't even know if I can get eight reps again. Maybe you drop the weight a little bit, just adjust as needed each set. And then after two sets of eight, you've got two sets of 15 for some higher rep work, same parameter, eight RPE each set. For pull down a choice, you've got a set of 12 at an eight RPE and then three sets at an eight RPE each set for the same weight. So whatever weight you did for that top set, or not really top set, but first set, you're gonna repeat that same weight for all the next three sets and just adjusting the rep scheme to an eight RPE each set. 
And then lastly here for side lateral choice, you're gonna do two sets of 12, around an eight to nine RPE each set, which I forgot to mention. I, I think most people already know this, but if you aren't familiar with RPE, I do have an RPE rating system up here of what that means. Um, such as eight RPE means two reps left in the tank. Um, basically whatever it is, is you're gonna take the, the number of reps you feel like you can do um, and subtract it by 10. So if you feel like you could have done three more reps, it's a seven RPE. But um, that's a whole other discussion if you if you need some help on RPE work. But for side lateral choice, you're gonna do those two sets of 12. And then on the third set, again, adjusting the weight however is needed to make sure you can maintain around 12 reps, you're gonna do 12 reps to an eight to nine RPE and then rest 20 seconds. And during that 20 seconds rest, you're going to drop, do a drop set. Um, so side lateral choice, drop set and rest pause. The rest pause, meaning you're gonna take a 20 second rest. The drop set, meaning you're gonna drop the weight. And I gave some parameters there. Drop one pin setting if it's like a cable machine. Drop five pounds each hand if it's, a, if it's dumbbells. Drop 10 to 15% load if it's a machine. Um, whatever it is, do a, do a reasonable drop. And after 20 seconds, take that new weight and AMRAP it to an eight to nine RPE again. Maybe this time you're gonna get like seven to eight reps. And then you're gonna do that one more time. Rest another 20 seconds, drop weight even further again, and AMRAP that new weight for a third set. Maybe you're gonna get six to seven that time. So basically it's three sets in a row with a 20 second rest in between each set and doing a drop set each time. Moving on to day three, we have competition pause squat. You've got ascending sets with the ranges included. So let's say you do 265 pounds for the first set and then 280 pounds for the second set. You'll plug those in and at least for this block, it doesn't change the back off work. This back off work is program percentage based. And the reason for that is just to kind of keep that, uh, keep that accountable to a specific difficulty without it ramping up too much based off of how the pause squats go. Because the fact is, if you haven't been doing pause squats, you may get uh, notably better at those as the block goes along. So the actual two by seven is programmed based off of the percentages. And notice it's not a pause squat, it's regular competition squats. After that, we've got reverse lunges, and these are optional based on if you feel like you need them. Two sets of 12 at a seven RPE each set. So adjusting each set as needed to stay around a seven RPE and doing 12 reps each side. Row of choice, we've got a set of 12 at an eight RPE and then repeating that same weight for three more sets and adjusting the reps as needed to be at eight RPE each set. And then lastly here, we've got, or actually not lastly, we've got two more days here. We've got conventional deadlift and you've got a, Top set of five, which I would call the primary set on the day at a five RPE, followed by a single. So you're actually ascending up to the single. Do not do the single first. You're gonna notice in later blocks, the single is going to be first. And especially when we get to the final block, the single is very much prioritized and the rep work intensity actually goes down. So notate that the actual execution order is is uh, important here. Um, the single earlier in the block one and two isn't as important and we're prioritizing the more of those as we get to block three where the rep work is more prioritized earlier in the, in the, in the program. So when you insert in this weight, let's say you do 370 pounds, you're gonna notice that that gives you the back off work and then you can do the single at let's say 430 pounds and then that will just insert in but it won't affect anything. You also have to notate that not only do you have competition deadlift, you then have pause deadlift for that final two by five back off, which will create a little bit more of a back off percentage due to the self-limiting variation. After that, we got hamstring curl of choice. Again, we have our accessory movement options here from Ben Giannis. You can be able to choose based off of what he recommends here if you'd like to. There are three sets of like 10 to 12 reps at an eight RPE each set. And then we've got bicep curl of choice followed by the drop set and rest pause, just like we did with the side lateral of choice. And then finally, the last day, very much like deadlift, you have competition bench press top set of five followed by a single. So the priority here is the top set of five. The single is more for skill practice and making it an easy transition when we do start prioritizing that single and having it first in coming blocks. Um, once you insert, I'll actually take a look at week two. So week one is pretty simple. You have a set of five, a single, one set of five, three sets of five for the back off work. Starting on week two, you would have what's called fatigue drop sets. So let's say you do 235 pounds for the set of five, that'll give you, and then you'll do 260 for the single. Either way, the back off program off of that first set of five. It's going to give you what's called fatigue drop sets. And if you've done one of my programs before, you're familiar with these. You're gonna have the option of four total sets. As you saw in week one, you did a set of five followed by three by five, four total sets. Here though, you're gonna do is you're gonna possibly do all sets at 220 pounds as long as you do not hit a seven RPE. And you can see it goes up. Week three goes to seven, R, seven and a half RPE stop. Week four goes to an eight RPE stop. 
you're gonna try and do as many sets of 220, up to four total sets, barring you don't hit seven RPE. But let's say after the second set, you're like, okay, that 220 was about a seven RPE. You're gonna go to this column here, say that you did two sets, and it's gonna tell you to do two sets of five at 205. It is not a is not a, a, a win necessarily to try and get all four sets at 220. This is just a way to auto-regulate your average intensity. On bench, we tend to be able to average, be able to tolerate a little bit higher average intensity on our back off work. So this is a way to auto-regulate it towards what your work capacity is. If you can only get two sets, that's awesome. You're gonna regulate according to what is best for you. If you can get all four sets, that's great too. It's not something that you're trying to force it. You're trying to truly auto-regulate so that if any of those sets feel like it hits a seven RPE, you're gonna have that be the stop and then do the remaining sets of whatever is left of your four sets with the final back off sets. After that, we've got machine chest press or dumbbell bench press um, for two sets of 10 at an eight RPE each set. And then after that, we're gonna have a drop set and rest pause. So you're gonna do those 10 reps to an eight to nine RPE, rest 20 seconds while doing the drop set and so on and so forth. And then the same thing with the tricep extension of choice. So really that explains most of the execution. The one other thing you need to know if you haven't done one of my programs before is that fifth week is a deload week. So what you insert in here, so let's say I do 225 and then 235, once you insert in the week four weight, it's then going to tell you what to do on that deload week. So notice that if the deload week doesn't look like it says anything, well, it's because you didn't insert the weight on week four. You have to insert the weight on week four to get the weight to calculate for week five. And so from there, the rest of the program should be pretty self-explanatory. The only difference is as you get into blocks two and three, you're gonna see some programming changes in the sense of the repetition schemes, the priority of singles versus the rep work, um, and the intensities. Um, if you have any questions on that, you can definitely feel free to reach out, but most of this should be pretty self-explanatory now since you understand what you need to insert to be able to calculate back off work, what it means when you see RPE each set, or you see the same weight to a certain number of reps, and all of that to be able to make sure to, to do the program accordingly. All right, so that concludes the instructional video on the 2022-15 week PRs free program. Um, really excited to be able to put this out there and to hear the progress you all make on this. Um, again, this is free. I don't charge for this. This is uh, something I want to give back because obviously not, not only not, I only have limited spots to be able to coach people, I have the limited availability of who could afford my coaching as well. So I really like to put this out there so that powerlifting as a whole can benefit people who, who don't have a coach or, or are getting into powerlifting or maybe can't afford coaching can still have a really good program to be able to run, um, as well as having the options that you can be able to tailor this a bit more towards you versus being sumo versus conventional and, and your bench frequency. Um, so if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, make sure to subscribe if you have not. Make sure to give this video a like and make sure to share it. Um, get this free program out there as much as possible so we can get as many people running it and as as many people hitting PRs as we can. So other than that, I'll talk to you the next time. Peace.